Olá, sejam todos bem-vindos a mais uma live do Mercado Bitcoin. Hoje nós estamos com um convidado muito especial, que é o Presto Vongun. Ele é um dos desenvolvedores do Prism, um dos principais clients do Ethereum 2.0, da nova versão né, desse upgrade do Ethereum. E esse client tem sido mais usado né, e passou muito bem nas baterias de testes. Da, nova, da fase zero que nós vamos que vai ser agora lançada na próxima semana. Né? Então, a, hoje vai ser uma oportunidade da gente esclarecer né, um, um pouco das dúvidas que muita gente no mercado tem sobre o Ethereum, né, essa nova versão do Ethereum. Né? E aí, hoje o Preston, é, aqui há poucos dias né, já de lançar a nova, a nova versão, muito gentilmente veio bater um papo aqui com a gente. Então... É, essa sessão, esse papo vai ser em inglês, tá? O, mas não tem problema. A, a Júlia, nosso time aqui, vai estar vai tá legendando para vocês, então vocês podem acompanhar as legendas aí em português. So, Preston, uh, uh, first of all, thank you very much. It's a pleasure having you with us. Uh, I know it's. Um, In a few days, you're going to release this very special version, uh, a historic moment for Ethereum. So uh, I'm very glad that you spare a few minutes of your time to talk with us. So uh, thank you. Thanks. It's a, a pleasure to be here. Okay. So Mercado Bitcoin is the largest crypto exchange in Latin America. Uh, and of course, Ethereum is very important for our customers. Uh, I will tell you that maybe even more because in the past months, we are, we are releasing several tokens. We use some financial rights as collateral. So not only we trade Ether, but also we trade USDC and other tokens. So that's why our audience are very eager to know, to understand how Ethereum is going to behave in the future. So I have a, one question for you to get, we get started. Um, do you think the naming Ethereum 2.0 is correct? Uh, is the line with the updates? Or is this just a simple, a simple upgrade to Ethereum blockchain uh, that was predicted in the past, maybe if we get back to 2015, this upgrade was predicted by the original team? That's a great question. So this has always been on the roadmap to upgrade Ethereum, to switch to proof of stake, and also to add database sharding so that we can scale at a pro protocol level. Um, the reason it's called 2.0 is because it's it's not really a simple upgrade or, or you know, hard fork uh, that we've seen before where we're able to do that simply. It's actually, you know, a full rewrite of everything from the ground up. So ETH2 is an entirely new system Uh, and we'll be running separately in parallel to Ethereum 1, at least for at first. And then it kind of gets, you know, more and more integrated with uh, the original Ethereum, which now we're referring to as ETH1. Uh, so we have this distinction between ETH1 and ETH2. Okay, I see. And um, it's a, I know it's a huge, huge challenge, but... Could you explain sharding uh, to our audience in um, maybe a simple in simple terms? <laughs> I'll try. It's it's uh, <laughs> sometimes not so simple, but the the basic concept here is that we have a blockchain that, in its current design, can only process somewhere between 15 and 25 transactions per second. Uh, when we're trying to fulfill the, you know, the mission of a decentralized world computer to operate at a global scale, it, that doesn't quite meet that mark. So we need to improve. 
uh, and a common technique in computer programming or, or at least in software management is that when we have more, more demand for something that will, then will fit on a single machine, we add another one, right? So if, if we have a database that is too large for one computer, we get two and we split it up. Uh, well, in the case of ETH2, we're using that concept to take the Ethereum blockchain and split it into 64 smaller pieces that will all interconnect and, and work together as ETH2. So with that, we get 64 times the current capacity. So that gets us a lot closer to the vision of a global decentralized world computer. I see. Um, and uh, what's going to happen to Ethereum next week in, in early December? What is, what is the phase zero? So Ethereum 2, we've broken it up into, into um, smaller subcomponents in, in terms of how we're going to release this software. Since it is such a, a radical change, you know, it's a rewrite of all of Ethereum, we wanted to do it incrementally in smaller pieces. So what's happening now is we're starting with the first phase, which we're calling phase zero. Uh, computer people like to start counting as zero. It's kind of how numbers have worked for computers. Um, so we call it phase zero, which is, which is really just the proof of stake aspect of things. It doesn't introduce sharding yet, but like we said, a little bit at a time. Uh, it is actually a really big and complicated piece, it's probably the biggest one that we have to, to develop. Um, and in the last month or so, we've had a deposit contract out there, which is the mechanism by which people can join ETH2 as a validator. And just this morning, we, we reached, uh, or maybe yesterday, we reached the threshold of validators needed to start ETH2. We need a minimum of 16,384, and we got that yesterday, November 23rd, um, and today's the 24th. So now in seven days on December 1st at 12 p.m. Uh, UTC uh, time, the Ethereum 1 phase zero um, proof of stake blockchain will start. So that's very exciting. Wow! Yeah, it's a, it's a huge milestone, right? Yes. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm looking for it. And um, and the, with this uh, with this upgrade in the Ethereum network, um, how how is going? What's the 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 network throughput uh, you you are predicting for this? Uh, on of course, and maybe in a phase phase one and phase two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're expecting that uh, when Ethereum 2 is complete, uh, that would be with the inclusion of phase 1 and 2, um, that the sharded throughput of Ethereum 2 will be somewhere on the order of um, 700 transactions per second, right, or, or more. It would be six, 64 times the current capacity. So. It, it might even be around a thousand, and that's just at the protocol layer, right? That's just at layer one. Now, if we're talking about how fast can Ethereum go, in you know, in theory, uh, using layer two protocols, so things like zk rollups, well, it gets so much faster, and that's kind of the next step beyond E two is, all right, well, how do we scale further with layer two? Mm, I see. Um, one one particular. Um, one particular subject for us, this is very important, not only for us in terms of um, as we are on exchange, but also for our customers is they're predicting the, the price of the transaction. For instance, when, um, when our customers decide to withdraw uh, his ether, his ether from, uh, our, our, the, from our exchange to his wallet, so we maybe take some time. Also, we need to pay the fees. Do you and uh, do you think the 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 the, the price the, the 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 fee is going to 
to get down, that the person is going to get that down. So how do you do you predict this? Certainly. So the 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 way that gas fees or transaction fees work in Ethereum is it's it's a dynamic market. So when there's more demand, uh, people are paying more for transaction fees, uh, especially when there's more demand than the blockchain can process. So what I'm expecting is that when we're able to run all 64 shards um, and each shard will have its own gas market, it will be much cheaper, at least at first, uh, than it is now, be, you know, because there will be much more capacity than there is demand. So, and um, another question is, okay, I have a sharding uh, processing and transaction, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I'm connecting to another validator or another sharding. How the then how could I perform a query to 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 get to know this the transaction status? Uh, I don't know. Maybe for instance, I have a friend. He's living in Australia. He sent me an ether. Probably he's going to be connected to uh, a sharding, and uh, I'm going to be connected to another one. So mm -hmm. how do you how do you, uh, project the the connection between the the, the different chartings? Uh, at least for 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 sure for to process the transaction. Okay, one sharding it performed very well, but the communication between them, how do you, how is going to work? Right. So each shard is kind of its own universe, right? So your friend um, would have to, or you, whoever, depending on the situation, would have to query the other shard to see, to, to figure out that sort of information. Um, and in terms of, okay, well, now I have all the information I need. Now I want to execute my transaction. Uh, well, what you would do, and you, this is all abstracted to you as a user. You you wouldn't really have to think about this. But for those interested, you would be completing a, what's called a cross shard transaction, uh, which is just kind of a three step process. Um, you'll initiate the transaction, and in your shard, and that will get cross linked into the beacon chain, uh, which is kind of the central, you know, coordinator of all the shards. And then the receiving shard will realize that this transaction is incoming uh, from that crosslink and then accept that um, transaction and return a receipt uh, in another crosslink. So then you now your balance will be, f uh, or you can receive that uh, receipt in the original shard so it's kind of you know this three-way uh, or three-step process awesome sounds pretty solid yeah and um another question that people uh brought us uh, was that is in terms of investment is is it good to become a validator do you think in a, maybe if if you're uh, still the ether price is still around five or or four hundred dollars do you think it's is um the, the, are you gonna we are gonna make a profit being a validator i certainly think so the um the earning rate that you'll receive as a validator is is on the order of uh 15 to 20 percent per year uh on that 32 eth deposit which is certainly at current prices around six hundred dollars right now. At that current price, that's certainly profitable, even if you ha are operating, you know, expensive hardware, which is not necessary, uh, or paying for internet or any of that kind of stuff. Uh, your annual yield will will be certainly profitable uh, with those kind of interest rates. And even as ETH two scales, the more validators that join the interest rate starts to diminish a little bit but even at a large scale you're still earning somewhere between five percent and eight percent which uh is pretty good when in comparison to you know traditional um kind of investments it's kind of savings right exactly you know it, it is kind of like a savings account in that way uh except that you you know it you do have to 
remain online, you do ha your validator does have to continue to do the work. So it's not entirely passive income, um, but it's pretty close. I mean, you can set up a machine to run your validator and kind of set and forget it and check it every once in a while. But um, for the most part, it's passive, but definitely think of it as, you know, you have to keep uh, your validator online to be earning a profit. I see. I'm a part of a Discord channel. And uh, yeah, I when I, I created um, a, a, a validator on Medala testnet, I mm -hmm. had a support for the, the, the other uh, developers. And uh, it was in very, very fast, less than 24 hours, I had my questions answered. So it was great. People are very, the people are very, the community are, is, is, the community is very excited to, to join this new chapter for the team. This is great. Um, so, and Preston, also, uh, you, we are talking about the community. Would you, would you like to, to share with us how people can, you know, uh, of course, we're going to, we're going to share the Discord link here and in, uh, in the comments, but there, is there any other channel people can join in, be part of a, of a Prism and also at Intu.O? So there are several communities in E2 that uh, I would recommend. Uh, for, first of all, I'll recommend uh, the Prismatic Labs Discord. Um, obviously, that's going to be the best way to get answers about Prism, uh, the best way to get in contact with uh, developers at Prismatic Labs. Uh, besides that, there's an Ethereum 2.0, an Ethereum Research and Development Discord, which might be helpful if you're interested in some of the technical aspects of the specification. And then there's also uh, an ETH staker community discord, uh, which is uh, uh, mostly uh, people from Reddit. Uh, and that's kind of like client agnostic, um, there to help everyone with any type of question. So whether it's about Prism or another client, they'll probably be able to help you there as well. Oh, awesome. So um, Preston, I'll I, again, thank you very much. I know you have a tons of of uh, items to finish, to or polish, to to check before the the release next week. And so, again, thank you very much for separating this time to talk talk with us. And uh, I wish the best of luck in the in the release date. Yeah, thank you so much, you guys. The the E two is happening in just a week on Tuesday. If you're interested in becoming a validator, it's not too late. Um, you can still send your deposit and join the queue for validators that will be activated once the chain starts. Uh, I definitely recommend try out the test net, get familiar with it, understand how it works, and ask questions. You know, it's a very new space, and there's a lot of things that are not well documented or not defined. So there are no dumb questions and we'd be happy to, to answer those on Discord, on Twitter, or anywhere else you can find us. Thanks again for having me. It's been really great. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you. See ya.